kind of get tired of being tired, but uh, certainly uh, a disappointing day for us on Saturday. Uh, the one thing that I will say is uh, I think our kids competed. Uh, I, I think they played very hard. Uh, we had a couple of situations that didn't go our way in terms of uh, uh, one one certain situation where you know we had a uh, lack of communications, not a lack, but we, we, we busted a call and, uh, in terms of getting it in. And uh, that, you know, that one play made a difference, but there were other plays. But I thought our, I thought our team uh, played hard. Uh, you know, certainly there's some things here that we can build on, some things that we can learn from, and that's what we got to do. We got to move on and, and, and get ready for, for this Saturday. So uh, I'll start taking questions now. What's your take on Bone Nicks, true freshman? He's had some, you know, we're obviously really good plays, had some freshman mistakes, pretty rough game at Florida. What, what, what's your take on him? I think he's a very talented guy. You know, obviously, uh, you know, dual threat. He can beat you throwing. He can beat you running. Uh, you know, he's a guy that, you know, you've got to account for in this offense, and uh, uh, their staff has done a good job preparing him to, to be ready to play in the SEC. Coach, I know you guys were – Crowding it more at the end, some bare front. Did it ever, like, did you ever think, like, just make this guy beat you with the pass and basically goal line him? I mean, with the success he was having running? We, uh, uh, we did a good bit of that, you know, throughout the game. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, 65 or 70 yards came on, you know, the last drive when we went out there. And um, I don't think we were mentally prepared to go back out there, but, you know, that's part of it, you know. And, uh, you know, he uh, he made a few throws in the game that uh, were were you know plays that that made the uh, uh, offense stay on the field, made our defense stay on the field, and he also he also had some runs in passing situations that uh, you know you 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 got to be you got to be able to make those plays defensively, and we were not. Yeah, Chief, I had a couple. I saw Soli, uh, I guess he got that boxing uh, glove, whatever, wrap off his hand. How did you think he played with that, without that? With well, that it's the thing? first time that he's been able really to, to grasp with that hand, and, and uh, but I thought he did a good job. Uh, I think he's going to only get better and better, and uh, we need for him to. But, uh, uh, you know, uh, in, in, in what I saw, there wasn't a lot of difference having it on or having it off. Because again, that's the first time he was able to really grasp somebody and try to use that hand. And uh, like I said, he's going to only get better and better. And then Chad was just talking about how obviously you got some talented young defensive backs, but you don't want to play them before they're ready and hurt their confidence because that could really set them back. Kind of, how, what, what, what's the line you got to walk? You, you'd like to play them and provide some depth, but also you don't want to play them before they're ready. No. What's, what's the what, well, what, What's the deal there? Well, we're trying to get them ready, you know, and. You know, we owe it to this team and each player to, you know, to get them ready. And sure, you know, coach is exactly right. I've seen guys that have been thrown out there. Uh, and and uh, I'll use this as an example. You know, last year we had to throw Bumper Pool out there before he was ready. You know, he withstood the, the, the season that way. You know, you see a, a, a much better player in Bumper Pool this year. You know, at linebacker, uh, you can get by with, with some of those mistakes. But... When you're on the back end, you know, uh, mistakes usually cost touchdowns. And so you got to be careful. Uh, you know, we need to continue to push the envelope, and we're going to try to do that to try to get them ready. And, uh, you know, we've got one or two guys we want to get in the game. And, uh, you know, we were hoping that we'd be able to get them in this game. This game turned out uh, being a, a different type game than we anticipated three weeks ago. And, uh, you know, so uh, uh, we went with more experienced guys and, and – uh, you know, I think that was the right thing to do. Coach, with McClure moving on, leaving the team, who who's the next man up uh, for for his role? Who's that now? Who's next up for his role? Who do you who do you look to to fill his void? Uh, Hayden Henry has been there. Will be there. If we run a if we have to go to a three linebacker scheme, then uh, uh, Deion Edwards, Grant Morgan, who can play out there, Zach Zemos who we got to get ready to play. We've been working and working and working. So, uh, you know, he's, uh, you know, he's going to have to play to get better. So that's kind of where we are. 
We got three or four answers there. Coach, you mentioned Bumper Pool. He he looked like he was just on you know another level on Saturday. He was playing very very hard. Just your thoughts on him? Well, I, I think you know it's you know probably played his best game to this point, and and and, and there's more to come. Uh, he's a very talented young man, and. Uh, you know, we certainly uh, expect him uh, to continue to get better and better. And uh, you know, he you know he wanted it, and uh, uh, he uh, he played that way. He played very passionate, uh, made a lot of plays, and uh, you know, it would have been a lot better if we win the football game. But I was I was still excited for him to see him play as well as he did. When you're looking at a uh, Gus Malzahn team, what are the things you prepare for? What what, what do they want to do? Well, what they want to do, you know. They're going to go back and look at things that they've hurt you with before. And, uh, you know, that could be a lot of different things. But obviously, you know, they've got, a, you know, they've got a, some, some talent. They've got some speed, a couple of the fastest guys in the nation. And, uh, you know, uh, you're going to see a bunch of deep balls. You're going to see, you know, speed sweeps. You're going to see reverses. You're going to see throwbacks. So uh, you've got you to gotta prepare for almost everything. You know, the screen game is a big part of what they do. And, uh, you know, like I said, they, uh, uh, you know, they intend to, to use those receivers that they have in, in, in terms of pushing the ball down the field. And then they're going to run the football. You know, they're going to run the inside zone. They're going to run the bluff zone. And when I'm talking about bluff zone, they're going to design runs for the quarterback. And uh, that's going to be a part of its package. So you've got to work on it all. Chiefs, you know, Whitlow, I guess he's got over 500 rushing yards. He's out for, I don't know, the next three or four weeks at least. What do you expect from their running game with, without their leading rusher? I, I don't think they'll change anything. Uh, you know, they've got two, uh, two backs that, uh, you know, not quite as big as their uh, uh, starter, uh, but probably faster, you know. So it'll be, uh, it'll be a little bit different, you know, with a little bit, you know, a little bit more speed in the backfield, maybe not quite as physical, maybe it will be, you know, but uh, – they're not going to change their offense because he's not there. I guarantee you it's nothing more than the next man up. He's got playmakers that he wants to get the ball in their hands, and that's what we're going to see. Do you think the time the defense spent on the field in the second half played a role? And they had a pretty big fourth quarter. Well, you know, the, the big fourth quarter came, like I said, with that last drive. And, and, and with a play that, you know, we were, uh, you know, uh, didn't have great communications on, on the play. And uh, we, uh, we left uh, one end of the field open. And, and when that happens, you know, all that's on me. But that was, you know, you, you take those two plays. And again, when you're talking about two plays, usually you're talking about, you know, you know losing a football game. But those two plays accounted for more than 100 yards. So, you know, it's not a, you know, no. The answer to your question, and I could have just said that, no, our kids competed, you know. Uh, you know, we, we shouldn't give up that, that last long run uh, when we went out there in the last drive. But those two plays, that was 100 yards in the, in the fourth quarter. And, uh, you know, it, uh, and I don't think it had anything to do with being tired. Coach, some, I'm not saying anybody's pointing fingers or splintering or anything, but sometimes when things aren't going your way, that tends to happen. What is the protocol for you guys to make sure to stay out in front of that, to keep these guys together and, and fighting? Well, you know, we got we got to we got to grow together, and uh, you know, we got to heck, we got to we got to be a family, and, and and we take a lot of pride in talking about that and being that. And if we if we what we talk about being, then you know, we're not going to have to worry about that. It's not going to splinter. We're going to stay together, and uh, you know, I, I talk to my guys about it often. Let me let me just say this: there's times in life that if you want to quit and give up, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. And our guys will not quit, and they will not give up. Thanks, Steve. Thank you, guys.